Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover symbols that are found on the data plates of your devices. Now why would you care about the symbols? Well those symbols are going to give you the physical traits and the electrical properties of the device that you're currently working on. So if your customers have a question about that device or if you are wondering how you're supposed to troubleshoot that device, these symbols can help you. Here is a couple sheets. Um, this is found on the BD.com website. And actually I found these to be a pretty good resource. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below. They cover quite a bit of things. Now, mind you, there is a whole regulation on symbols for medical devices or for electrical devices in general. And this book, this regulation is like 800 and some dollars. It's, it's unbelievably expensive. So I'm not going to go over all those. I'm just going to cover some of the rough ones that you're probably going to see when you walk up to a device. Some of the first symbols that you're going to see is right here. Your lot, your reference, and your serial number. These are your manufacturing date symbols. This is an expiration date. So if the device or consumable has an expiration date, you'll see it written there. Uh, fragile. Caution. Now caution usually is when there's some sort of high voltage inside the device or pinch hazards, etc. They're usually located right next to the read your manual symbol. Temperature range symbols that'll tell you the temperature range of the device that you're working with. Sometimes that does apply. We've all seen this one right here. That's your equipotential symbol, which usually is a ground reference point. So you can ground out that device. There are three different classes of devices. Now you've got your first class, class one, that is ground protected equipment. And that's your general everyday medical device that has a ground plug. When there is a leakage current in that device, the leakage current will go through the ground and it will maintain the device safety. Class two. Class two is a double insulated device. Now this symbol, you're gonna see a square inside a square. And if you hold up the, your fluke multimeter, you'll see that it is a double insulated device. Double insulated devices often don't have a ground plug. It'll be just a neutral and hot prong on your plug. Class two devices are often your general appliances. You see them around your house all the time, but you also find them in medical equipment. Now, double insulated devices have taken extra steps to ensure that at no time possible will mains current work its way to the outside and affect the user. This is often caused by using circuit boards, power supplies, so that the mains is converted over to DC as soon as it goes in the device, and it will also have a plastic case. So double insulated devices, you got the power that comes in, and it's got a plastic case. Matter of fact, I've got a perfect example of that right here. Let's see, what do you got? If you guys have been watching this channel, you guys know that I happen to love DeWalt tools. And what we have here, this is a Yule listed device, two prongs. This is a double insulated device. Notice it's got a plastic case. There is no ground prong, but there's no exposed metal in this. Whatever metal screws, fasteners that you have are going straight into other plastic casing. The only thing that's exposed and this is low voltage DC right here. So no risk whatsoever of getting shocked by this device. And then we're gonna talk about class three devices. Class three are low voltage devices. The low voltage is considered to be 25 volts AC or 60 volts DC. And usually these are your battery powered devices. Now mind you, if you have a battery powered device that is possible to be plugged in or plugged into a charger, it's got to be rated as a class 2 or a class 1 device. Your class 3 devices might be something like a portable SPO2. It's battery powered. You change out the batteries and it keeps on trucking. Or the temporal thermometers, those things, they're definitely a class 3. You change out the 9 volt, they keep on going. Now we're going to talk about the uh, types of electrical properties. So we have type B, which is equipment with certain leakage protection. It's very generalized. It's the most basic level of device that you can use around patients. Then we have type BF, which is the same as B, but it's got isolated floating parts. 
Now you're going to see type BF around especially surgical devices. The reason being, the floating parts might be your shaver head or the motor that connects to it. I see these all the time in equipment drivers, shavers, stuff like that. Uh, you're also going to have them on irrigation pumps, etc. Anytime where you have a attachment that connects to the device, it's going to be isolated from mains no matter what. They're never going to have mains going anywhere near a patient. In this day and age, it's just not necessary. The third type is type CF. And this is the most stringent electrical standard that we have in all of medical equipment. Type CF is considered, uh, it's certified for cardiac surgery. Now, CF is going to be things like probably your SpO2s, some of your smoke absorbers, definitely your patient monitors. All those will have type CF. Those are some of the, the standards. Let's see, some of the other stuff that you're going to see. Look down here. We got, oh man, I don't know why this is reversed. I'm sorry, guys. I really apologize. But right here, we have IP27 and IP22. Your IP standards are your level of waterproof. And that's very important when it comes to things like surgical equipment because it's considered a wet zone. Also, your small procedure rooms and stuff like that, they're wet locations. So you got to have an IP rating for all devices that are going to be in the vicinity. And those type of devices are often going to have either a rubber gasket or it's going to have uh, some sort of permanent seal around the edges. So you got to be careful when you're cracking those devices open. And it might actually behoove you to check and see if it's got an IP rating before you start cracking into it because if it does that means there's going to be extra hassle to get inside the device. Sometimes it might even be siliconed shut so you're fighting against the silicone to break it open. Those devices I would highly suggest shipping back to the manufacturer instead of opening them yourself because believe it or not after you open a device it's almost impossible to get the IP rating the same. So remember that if it's got an IP rating, you might want to ship it back to the manufacturer. Now here's an important one. See this little guy right down here that looks like an antenna? This one right here means that the device gives off some sort of electromagnetic radiation. It usually means it has Wi-Fi or as I found out recently, it also means that it has those RFID tags. Now why would that be important? It's important because if you have a device that takes a consumable, like all medical equipment seems to be doing nowadays, they're putting RFID tags on the consumable. So let's say your users buy consumables from a third party source, or there's a similar type of consumable that's used on another device and they're going to try and use it on this device. It's not going to work because it's looking at that RFID to reset some sort of counter inside the medical device and say, hey, we're good to go. We're, we can use it for X amount of hours or one procedure or whatever. You're going to see this on everything from uh, smoke evacuators, the new ones. I don't know why, but they, they start putting RFID tags on them. We see them on types of printers. And let's see, what was the other device we have them on? The Neptunes. Those stupid Neptunes. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, the Neptune filters that fit in the front, they have RFID tags on them. And I'm not really sure about it, but it also might be the air seal devices might have an RFID tag on them. I could be wrong, but it would make sense why they would have an RFID tag on them. So if you see this little guy right here and you've got some sort of complaint about the device not working with the user, check and see if there's an RFID tag somewhere on the consumable. Because it's possible that they took this consumable and they left it in the device while it was on and now the device says no it's an expired consumable even though it might not be used this little symbol right here means read your user manual and we're gonna have this one up here the CC this little CC means country of origin we don't see that too often here sometimes with European manufactured equipment we're starting to see that more often and this up this top one up here is alternating current so as you can see this is only a fraction of the symbols that you're going to see on your medical devices. And almost every single one of them has them. And they're going to give you the traits on the device. The ones that we probably experience the most are your lot number, your reference number, which is often your model number, and your serial number. But 
Notice when you see one of these dates, it means your manufacturing date. Especially if you see this one right here, that means that it might be expired. Check your dates, guys. I don't want to waste any more of you guys' time. Just to let you know, there are symbols on the back of all your medical devices. And I highly encourage you guys to check into it. Look them up. Sometimes you'll be a little bit surprised at what you read back there. So read your data plates. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked this video. This is just a little something I was thinking about because I was talking about it with one of my coworkers. Believe it or not, like these things could apply to you. So it's, it's one of those things. This is your craft. I encourage you guys to be the best at what you do in your craft. And one of them is understanding all the symbology that is located on your data plates. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.